So, you know, let's assume that our potential is not something that's very singular at the origin. So we are still looking at the origin. And, uh, you know, let's assume that as r goes to zero, that r squared v of r, you know, that is zero, okay? So can you give me an example of uh, potential that is like that? The thing is that it doesn't actually have to be zero. It just have to be have. It just has to have the value of a constant, okay? Because we can always add a constant to our Hamiltonian, and the physics will be unrelated. Okay. So anything, you know. So for example, um, okay, which potential that we commonly use every day, if you're a physicist. Uh, which uh, has this uh, property. For example, do you know of a potential which has, say, V of R is, say, 1 over R? Uh Ah, uh, gravitational, something gravitational potential or uh, something of that sort. Yeah, so gravitational potential is, is correct. There's another one, very famous. Mm, something similar to that, something to do with charge. Okay, yeah, so uh, anyone else? If you have a potential which is 1 over r, what kind of force law does it lead to? Spring okay. constant? Spring. Uh, no, okay, how is, how, is, uh, how is force related to a potential? Or potential energy? Oh, del V by del R. Or... Del V by del R. Is there, what about the sign? Do you minus. know what it is? Yeah, should okay. be minus, I think. So this is something we know. The potential energy is related to the force in this fashion, and the field is related to potential. Okay. So if I have uh, V equals to, uh, you know, some constant, times one over r, what kind of, uh, you know, and this constant can be positive or negative, what kind of F do we get, force do we get? I'm assuming you know how to do differentiation. Um, it's like one over r square, so inverse r square. So this is inverse square. Inverse square law. Yeah. So what fundamental forces in nature have inverse square law? Shujosh said something about gravitation. Somebody else, Moon or electric magnetic force? Not electric. Electric. electric yeah. Sorry. Electrostatic force, right? Yes. Sir. Yeah. Okay. So, 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 yeah. There are forces, which are important forces, which have this sort of, you know, uh, behavior. That the behavior is that as r goes to zero, you know, v, uh, you know, goes to infinity, but in a way that is uh, slower than. Uh, the way that r squared goes to zero. Okay? So this is an important class of potential, right? So 
So we are still not saying anything specific about a potential, but we are saying something about an important class of potentials, okay? So now if I look at this equation, uh, where was this equation? Here, right? So uh, what I should do is uh, I should multiply this by say, I can, as R goes to zero, I should be able to ignore this term, right? Is that clear? Why? Um, not exactly sure why. If 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 you multiply this whole equation by r squared, mm -hmm. so we have r squared, of course. But this thing, oh, goes, I see. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. I we cannot it. get rid of this this term because this term is going to be otherwise we don't get any physics, and this is going to change, right? Mm -hmm. And but in this term we can. This is going to be multiplied by r squared, so we can ignore this. What about this term? This is a constant, right? So we should be able to ignore this term too, because this will also be, so everything, this is going to be multiplied by r squared. This is going to be multiplied by r squared. This is going to be multiplied by r squared. Okay, so near r equals to zero, our differential equation becomes very simple with this assumption. By with this assumption, I can ignore, let me write this, you know, with the above assumption, you know, the V of R, R squared term goes to zero as R goes to zero. Also, R squared E, goes to zero as well. And therefore, our differential equation becomes very simple. It becomes d squared u e l of r by d r squared. And if I take the uh, angular momentum uh, term on the other side, it just become r squared u of e l of r. Okay. So near the r equals to zero, near r equals to zero, this is the equation we need to solve. And it's actually a very easy equation to solve. We just have to note that if I take the second derivative of u of l, you know, whatever we get there, you know, if I multiply that by r squared, I should get it back, right? So there are essentially two you know, uh, possible solutions, because of course, this is a second order differential equation. So there can be only two linearly independent solution. The first one is a to the power r l plus one. The second one is b r to the power minus l, right? Because if you take the derivative of this, you get tw twice, you get, you get exactly this thing. If you take the derivative, you, get, you also get exactly this thing, times this minus two and times this minus two, but then you've got one over r squared. Uh, sorry, um, yeah, so so essentially when this thing multiplies, you know, this thing, you do get minus two, okay? Is it clear why this is a solution to this? Yes, sir. Okay, right, so this is basically the most general solution near uh, r equals to zero. But L is positive, okay? L is zero or positive. And we see that, you know, as R goes to zero, B over R L, this diverges, right? And therefore we don't expect that to be a physical solution because, you know, then we will have problems with, uh, you know, normalization or wave function. But you might say, hey, how, yeah, because, you know, uh, when we do the dr, 
it's just u squared. There's no r squared here to, you know, uh, soften up the singularity, right? So you can get this even more um, rigorously. What you can say is that, okay, let me look at a small, you know, sphere near the origin. Now, this is the full solution. And see how much probability current is leaking out of this small sphere. And, uh, you know, as I take R2 in zero, as I take the radius of the sphere, R to zero. You know, that should, uh, that should be vanishing uh, for, you know, for something physical. So essentially we have to compute J, the probability current dot R hat. But the probability current, and this is, uh, you know, given by H over M, the imaginary part of psi star D by DR of psi. We are only taking the R derivative because of this dot R, okay? So this is, you should know roughly the expression for the probability current by now. And if I now, if, you know, look at the relevant part of, uh, you know, psi, uh, then it's going to be H by M R of E L R, you know, D by D R, R of EL of R, right? The angular part, because they don't depend on R, you know, they just go through this derivative and because, you know, they basically give you some sort of, you know, uh, ang angle dependent stuff that we are not interested in, okay? Now, if you look at the part of the a r to the power l plus one solution, you know, the contribution to the probability current you get is four pi r squared times j r. And that just turns out to be l times r to the power two l plus one. And this goes to zero in the limit R goes to zero because this is a positive power of R. On the other hand, for pi R squared, if I look at the B R to the power one over R L, then I would I get something like, you know, this thing. And, and you know, I'm I'm leaving this as an exercise. It's very easy to show these things, but very instructive. You get um, some constant. I think L plus one. And then you get r to the power minus 2l minus 1. And this goes to infinity even for l0 as r goes to 0. Okay? So this means that uh, if I take the second solution, the amount of probability current coming out of the origin is infinite, which is not a physical result. So this means that for quantum mechanics to be valid, we have to set B equals to zero, okay? So in terms of, in pure mathematical terms, of course, B non-zero is a solution to the differential equation, but quantum mechanics is not just solving differential equation. Quantum mechanics is solving differential equations with uh, very important boundary conditions, okay? Okay, any, any questions? Mm, no, sir. So we say that U of E of L of R has the form of R to the power L plus one at the origin. Okay. Of course, this is assuming, this is assuming that our potential satisfies this. Any questions? <laughs>